Astronomers around the world are exploring the stars, planets, and galaxies to find answers to the most mysterious questions about the structure of the universe. After centuries of observation and exploration, the map of our solar system has become quite detailed. We live on one of the four inner planets, then comes Mars and the asteroid belt, two gas giants, two ice giants, then a second asteroid belt, with many small icy bodies. However, two American astronomers have stunned the scientific community with an unexpected discovery that has been reported in the media. They have discovered a mysterious ninth planet at the edge of the solar system. It is hard to believe that the solar system is not yet a fully explored territory. In fact, most astrophysicists have known for a long time that a mysterious object lurks at the edge of the solar system, which has not yet been detected. So beyond Neptune's orbit, something strange is going on with the trajectory of a number of space rocks orbiting the Sun. Scientists thought that something could only be described by the presence of a giant planet, the so-called Planet Nine. So far, no one has been able to see it. However, according to calculations and circumstantial evidence, there are reasons to believe in the existence of this mysterious planet behind Neptune, which will become, probably, the ninth in the solar system. Is there a ninth planet left to discover in the depths of the solar system? Dear Traveler, Good morning. Today I take you to discover one of the greatest mysteries of the solar system, in search of Planet Nine. Before leaving for a new adventure, think about liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss anything. Thank you, and have a nice trip. The existence of objects far beyond Neptune was first proposed by astronomer Frederick Leonard in 1930. According to him, Pluto is far from being the most distant object in the solar system. Thirteen years later, another astronomer confirmed Leonard's statements by advancing his hypothesis that at the edge of our system is a nebula filled with small bodies that have never gathered into a single planet. Several scientists have made calculations and confirmed the existence of a belt of objects and comets beyond Neptune, called the Kuiper Belt. The first images of objects in this belt appeared in 1992, and many trans-Neptunian objects have been discovered, such as dwarf planets and large asteroids, whose closest orbital point is farther from the Sun than Neptune. The Kuiper Belt is a region of the solar system that begins beyond Neptune. But scientists don't know at this point where it ends. We don't know exactly where the outer edge of the Kuiper Belt ends. Some objects discovered in the Kuiper Belt have unusual orbits that are 2,000 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. The amazing discoveries about the Kuiper Belt have shown that there are several types of objects that are dynamically different from each other, mainly for reasons related to Neptune's gravitational control. Furthermore, it has been proven that Pluto is only one of the large objects in the Kuiper Belt. In addition, scientists were able to determine the size and mass distribution in the Kuiper Belt, which allowed them to list more than 2,000 celestial bodies in the Kuiper Belt. But these objects represent only a small fraction of the total number of celestial bodies in this region of the solar system. The components of the Kuiper Belt are comets, asteroids, and many dwarf planets, including Pluto, Eris, Haumea, and Makemake, 
Most Kuiper Belt objects are composed of icy volatiles such as water, ammonia, and methane. Comets are celestial bodies made of dust, rocks, and ice, while asteroids are made of rocks and metals. Despite the fact that there are many objects in the Kuiper Belt, scientists have found that their mass is quite small and the total mass is equal to only 10% of the mass of the Earth. However, it is believed that the Kuiper Belt was much more massive when it began to form billions of years ago, 20 or 40 times more massive than the Earth. This is a mystery. How did these bodies form with such small mass? It should also be noted that contrary to popular belief, the asteroid belt contains very little matter, itself spread over a large volume. The loss of mass in this frozen celestial belt is explained by the fact that the objects of the Kuiper belt are linked by the orbital resonance of Neptune. For example, at a resonance of 3 to 2, Neptune orbits the Sun three times in the same amount of time it takes Kuiper Belt objects to orbit the Sun only twice. This means that Neptune's gravity is acting on the bodies in this orbit, so that the force increases just as when we swing, and the force increases with time. Many scientists say that the only explanation for why so many bodies are in resonance with Neptune is the migration of this planet, which did not form in an orbit in which it is currently located. Thus, according to the model of formation of our solar system, Neptune was before Uranus, itself very close to the current orbit of Saturn. The Kuiper Belt has greatly influenced understanding of the origin and dynamics of the solar system. Before it, the solar system was like clockwork, a collection of planets orbiting the Sun in a casual, stable, predictable, even boring way. After the discovery of the Kuiper Belt, and in particular, the resonant objects that the planets migrate to, extraordinary opportunities arose. If the planets were blown to where they are now, they could have crossed each other's resonances if this is the case, then they have shaken the solar system, and various chaotic processes have taken place. In some models, the loss of 99.9% .9 of the Kuiper Belt objects could be due to a strong shaking of the solar system, which occurred as a result of the interactions between Jupiter and Saturn, which occurred as a result of planetary migration. Ejecting the icy giants on more distant objects. It is at this time that Neptune passed behind Uranus. The understanding of the structure of the Kuiper Belt depends on the migration of planets. The impact of the Kuiper Belt on the study of the solar system and the evolution of its formation has been enormous. Our understanding of the origin of the organization of the solar system is very different from what we thought before. And now we understand that the solar system does not run like clockwork. The story of the ninth planet began to gain momentum once the general organization of the solar system became clear. The first step toward understanding this problem was the discovery of Neptune when observations of Uranus indicated that there were patterns in its motion that could not be explained by the presence of known masses in the solar system. In 1830, astronomers drew attention to unexpected deviations in the orbit of Uranus and suggested that there was another planet behind it, which caused a gravitational disturbance. The hypothesis was confirmed in 1846, when Neptune could be observed in a mathematically predicted region of the sky. It turned out that it had already been seen, but that it could not be distinguished from distant stars. 
The average distance to Neptune is 4.5 billion kilometers, or 2.8 billion miles, or about 30 astronomical units. The discovery brought new results. On the one hand, it was a triumph for the theory of gravity, and on the other hand, it turned out that the presence of Neptune did not fully explain the anomalies in the motion of Uranus. Therefore, Scientists had the idea that other massive bodies outside the orbit of Neptune were present. This mystery inspired many scientists and amateur astronomers to search for other planets further away. Further observations of Neptune and Uranus showed a discrepancy between the actual motion of the planets and that mathematically predicted, giving confidence that the 1846 discovery could be repeated. It seems that in 1930 the search was successful when the American astronomer Clyde William Tombaugh discovered Pluto at a distance of about 40 astronomical units. However, when Pluto was discovered, its parameters were compared to the expected dimensions of Planet X, which with its gravity was supposed to disturb the motion of Uranus. As a result, it turned out that Pluto was not suitable for the role of the hypothetical planet. For a long time, Pluto was the only known object of the solar system located further from the Sun than Neptune. And as the quality of observations improved, the data on Pluto's size kept changing downward. By mid-century, Pluto was thought to be about the size of Earth with a very dark surface. In 1978, the mass of Pluto was made clear by the discovery of its satellite, Charon. It turned out to be much smaller than not only Mercury, but even the Earth's moon. In 1992, the story took another turn. Since that year, and thanks to digital photography and computer processing of data, the first trans-Neptunian object was discovered, which in addition to Pluto, orbits the Sun. This was the first step towards the discovery of a group of bodies that are now called Trans-Neptunian Objects, or Kuiper Belt. The discovery of the Kuiper Belt did not end in 1992. The first object was followed by the second, the third, the fourth, and now several thousand objects are known in the Trans-Neptunian region. At first, by habit, they were called planets. There were 10 in the solar system, then 11, then 12. But in the early 2000s, astronomers sounded the alarm. It became clear that the solar system does not stop beyond Neptune, and it is not appropriate to give the status of planet to each block of ice. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union confirmed that Pluto is not a planet in its own right, but in fact it is the first object discovered in the Kuiper Belt. Thus, a distinct name was coined for Pluto-like bodies, a dwarf planet. Meanwhile, the search for real planets outside the orbits of Neptune and Pluto did not stop. There were even hypotheses about the presence of a red or brown dwarf planet there, i.e. a small star-shaped body with a mass of several tens of that of Jupiter's, which forms a double star system with the Sun. This hypothesis has prompted a group of scientists who have drawn attention to the fact that mass extinctions on Earth occur about every 26 million years and have suggested that this is the period of the return of a massive body to the vicinity of the inner solar system, which leads to an increase in the number of comets rushing towards the interior of the solar system, and thus increasing the probability of an encounter with the Earth.
NASA has made two attempts to find a possible planet or brown dwarf. In 1983, the space telescope IRIS made a complete mapping of the celestial sphere in the infrared range. The telescope observed tens of thousands of sources of thermal radiation and managed to discover several asteroids and comets in the solar system. In 2009, a similar but more sensitive telescope, WISE, managed to find several brown dwarfs, but at a distance of several light years, that is to say, unrelated to the solar system. It also showed that in our system, there are no Saturn or Jupiter-sized planets beyond Neptune either. No one has been able to see a new planet or a nearby star until now. Either there are none at all, or the object in question is too cold and emits or reflects too little light to be detected by a random search. Scientists must therefore rely on indirect signs, such as the motion characteristics of other cosmic bodies already discovered. At first, encouraging data were obtained in the anomalies of the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. But in 1989, it was found that the reason for the anomalies was an erroneous determination of the mass of Neptune. It turned out to be 5% lighter. After correction of the data, the simulation began to coincide with the observations and the ninth planet hypothesis was abandoned. Some researchers have pondered the reasons for the appearance of long period comets in the inner solar system and the source of short period comets. Long period comets may appear near the sun once every hundreds or millions of years, while short period comets may appear around the sun every 200 years or less, so they are much closer. Comets have a very short lifespan by cosmic standards. Their main material is ice of various origins, water, methane, cyanide, etc. The sun's rays evaporate the ice, and the comet turns into an imperceptible stream of dust. However, short period comets continue to orbit the sun today, billions of years after the formation of the solar system. This means that their numbers are being replenished from an external source. The Oort cloud is considered such a source. It is a hypothetical region with a radius of up to one light year, or 60,000 astronomical units around the Sun. It is thought that there are millions of pieces of ice flying in circular orbits. But periodically, something changes their orbit and propels them toward the Sun. The nature of this force is still unknown. It could be a gravitational disturbance from nearby stars, the results of collisions in a cloud, or the influence of a large body inside. For example, it could be a planet slightly larger than Jupiter. The authors of this hypothesis assume that the telescope WISE would be able to find it, but the discovery did not happen. If the Oort cloud is only a hypothetical family of small bodies in the solar system that astronomers cannot observe directly, the Kuiper Belt is much better seen. Pluto is the first Kuiper Belt body to be discovered. Three other dwarf planets the size of Pluto or smaller, and more than a thousand small bodies have now been discovered there. While observing the planetoids in the Kuiper Belt, astronomers discovered an amazing pattern. Most of them have elongated comet-like orbits, which approach the Sun briefly, at a distance of 40 to 70 astronomical units, and then move away from it for hundreds, even thousands of years. And the larger the object, the stronger its retreat. Moreover, sednoids, i.e. extreme trans-Neptunian objects, have deviated from the Sun in the same direction. Such a coincidence could be an accident, if we are talking about simple comets, 
which during the billions of years of the history of the solar system would have been scattered by all the big planets, in particular Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. However, for such a coincidence in the deviation of large objects, a very large planet is needed, whose orbit would reach the Oort cloud. Namely, this hypothetical huge set of bodies would be located beyond the orbit of the planets and the Kuiper Belt. In 2016, it was an earth-shattering scientific discovery that occurred when two American astronomers, Mike Brown and Konstantin Batigan from the California Institute of Technology, announced signs of the existence of a previously unknown planet on the outskirts of the solar system. The search for the planet began in 2014, when Batigan, a former student of Brown's, published a paper claiming that 13 of the most distant objects, called trans-Neptunian objects in the Kuiper Belt, the huge region of space beyond Pluto's orbit, have eerily similar orbits. Then, a version of the existence of a small planet nearby was proposed. Brown then did not support this version, but continued the calculations. With Batigan, they began a year-and-a-half project to study the orbits of these bodies. Thus, by comparing the orbital characteristics of the sednoids, the two researchers found mathematically that the probability of their random coincidence is only 0.007%. The scientists went further and compiled a computer model aimed at finding the characteristics of the planet, capable of modifying the orbits of bodies beyond Neptune. The data they received in January 2016 became the basis for the announcement of the pre-discovery of a new planet in the solar system. Soon enough, the two astronomers realized that the orbits of six of these objects pass near the same region of space, despite the fact that all the orbits are different. It's like looking at six clocks, six hands that turn at different speeds, and then display the same time. In addition, it turned out that the orbits of the six bodies are inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the plane of the elliptic. In fact, this could not be accidental. Therefore, through this revelation, astronomers find an explanation for many previously discovered features in the motion of the icy bodies of the Kuiper Belt. Having very elongated elliptical orbits, for some reason they are clustered at the points of perihelion where they are closest to the Sun. Calculations were made as a result of which scientists expressed a very reasonable version of the existence of a small planet nearby, which affects them by its gravity. According to the two astronomers, the most distant objects in the solar system orbit in the same direction. And the only theoretically correct model to explain this reality is the one that reveals that the orbits of the trans-Neptunian objects are maintained by the gravity of a planet. More precisely, it is reported that the planet was discovered by a mathematical analysis of the perturbations undergone by many icy bodies of the so-called Kuiper Belt. To confirm this analysis, scientists plan to use the most powerful telescopes to find the planet. But at such a distance, the brightness of all the bodies is low, and the search becomes more complicated. It is possible that the ninth planet has already been recorded on the images of some telescopes, and its photographs are in the archives. But due to its low luminosity and slow movement against the background of distant stationary objects, it has not been noticed. The hypothesis of scientists is rapidly gaining momentum on a global scale. Various scientific groups have joined the search for the mysterious planet. Thus the project, 
Backyard Worlds Planet 9 was created in February 2017, thanks to which ordinary internet users could see millions of images of different parts of the sky pasted together in animated clips from photographs taken by the telescope WISE. However, so far the search for the planet has not yielded any results. To search for the planet, Brown and Batigan set aside time on the Japanese Subaru telescope at an observatory in Hawaii. Other astronomers join the search. Brown estimates that it will take about five years to study most of the region of the sky where the planet might be. Furthermore, in his interviews, Brown states that the probability of finding a new planet is 90%. However, at this point, it is too early to talk about a discovery. If astronomers knew where to look, they might be able to see Planet 9 and estimate its size. But long-range telescopes have too narrow a field of view to search freely over large areas of the sky. For example, the famous Hubble Space Telescope has examined less than 10% of the entire celestial sphere in its 25 years of operation. The two astronomers believe that Planet 9 could be seen with a wide-angle reflecting telescope with three huge mirrors at the Vera Rubin Observatory in Chile, which will be commissioned in 2022 and is expected to become fully operational in 2023. Initially, the idea of the presence of unknown planets in the solar system is not new. Let's go back in time to the beginnings of the first civilizations and explore the mysterious planet Nibiru. In Mesopotamian mythology, the Earth was formed by the collision of two planets, Tiamat and Nibiru. Tiamat was destroyed but Nibiru, obviously more resistant, continues to roam in our solar system and returns every 3,600 years to trigger terrible destructive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which in the end will lead to the apocalypse. The planet Nibiru is also mentioned in the Sumerian clay tablets, showing a high level of astronomical knowledge among the Sumerians in fact, the Sumerians were aware of the existence of a mysterious planet that they called Nibiru and perceived it as an absolutely real celestial body. They believed that Nibiru was inhabited by the civilization of the so-called Anunnaki. According to them, these Anunnaki are the mysterious ancestors of mankind who created Homo sapiens for exhausting work in the gold mines of Mesopotamia and Africa. Could this mysterious planet Nibiru be Planet 9? Although this story is a myth, it reminds us that for thousands of years the stories of mysterious planets and extraterrestrial civilizations have been sources of inspiration and sometimes of new discoveries. The calculated characteristics of Planet 9 have been published and will be used in future research. Scientists believe that there were originally four cores in the solar system that formed Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. According to one hypothesis, Planet 9 represents the fifth protoplanet, which came too close to Jupiter or Saturn and was thrown into a distant, eccentric orbit. The possibility of the discovery of a ninth planet of the solar system has excited the scientific mind. Astronomers from all over the world started to estimate its orbit, its characteristics, and many other very intriguing parameters. But then what would this planet look like? The orbital parameters of Planet 9 would reflect those of the Sednoids. In fact, the orbit of the planet would always be elongated, eccentric, 
and inclined with respect to the plane of the main planets of the solar system, but directed in the opposite direction. Consequently, the perihelion of the planet would be 200 astronomical units at the closest point, and the aphelion would reach 1200 astronomical units. This is even further than Sedna, which is the most distant object ever observed. To give an idea, one astronomical unit corresponds to the distance of Earth to Sun, or 150 million kilometers, or 93 million miles. Calculations have shown that the planet revolves around the Sun at a distance of 20 orbits of Neptune, which represents the most distant planet from the Sun, located at a distance of 4.5 billion kilometers, or 2.8 billion miles from it. Because of such a distance from the Sun, the planet is not visible and makes a complete revolution around the Sun between 10,000 and 20,000 years. Therefore, a year on planet 9 would last up to 20,000 Earth years, the time it would take to complete the entire orbit. The planet would therefore be extremely distant from us. By way of comparison, not so long ago, the NASA probe New Horizons flew to the dwarf planet Pluto, a journey that took nine years. It would have taken 54 years to fly to this famous planet 9. And this is only in the best case, when the planet would be as close as possible to the Sun. And it would take about 350 years for the same probe to reach it at the farthest point of its orbit. If these calculations are correct, then the last time it was close to the Earth was when it was inhabited by mammoths and the number of people in the world did not exceed 5 million. The entire history of the development of human civilization on Earth, from the first developments in agriculture to the invention of spacecraft, would fit in less than a year on this planet. However, the mathematical model allowed researchers to calculate the estimated parameters of the orbit of Planet 9, but it did not allow to determine even approximately where the planet is currently on the orbit. Recently, in 2021, a study reported an update of the observational bias calculations. Thus, a suite of numerical simulations showed that the perihelion of the orbit is 240 to 385 astronomical units, and the mass of the new planet is 4.9 to 8.4 that of the Earth. In order to influence the planetoids, Planet 9 would need a large mass, so it is considered 10 times heavier than the Earth and two to four times larger, which allows to place this planet in an intermediate category between the telluric planets and the giant planets. This mass is sufficient for the planet to clear the region of its orbit from other objects. Thus, it is a true super-Earth, unlike the dwarf planets. In addition, this planet dominates a region that is larger than any other known planet in the solar system. There are suggestions that this planet is a gas giant, dense gas ice, which is similar to Neptune and has a smaller albedo. However, these figures are derived from Neptune and Uranus, so astronomers believe that the parameters of Planet 9 should be similar to them. Like Neptune and Uranus, the ninth planet will be a giant of ice, rock, and various gases heavier than hydrogen and helium. However, its final consistency is unknown. The path through the solar system on which Planet 9 collected its material was very long as a result. Its composition may differ from scientists' predictions. Based on the structure of the Kuiper Belt, scientists in 2011 advanced a theory about the presence of a fifth giant planet belonging to our solar system. 
This opinion emerged after astronomers went to try to explain exactly how a complex of asteroids, which are constantly moving in a given orbit, is formed. Using a computer, more than a hundred different event models were tested. After verifications, the astronomers came to the conclusion that there is another giant planet in the solar system, the fifth consecutive one in our system. Supposedly, about four billion years ago, a giant planet, by the force of its gravitational field, pushed Neptune out of its orbit around Jupiter and Saturn. For this reason, it ended up behind Uranus. During its journey, Neptune took with it the main elements that were thrown out of its current orbit. They thus formed the heart of the Kuiper Belt. Nevertheless, scientists did not know what type of planet it could be. By taking the scenario of a Planet 9, some of the mysteries of space began to be clarified. According to some opinions, after the giant planet pushed Neptune away, it moved away into space. It is possible that the gravitational forces of other planets have changed the orbit of its path. This mysterious planet, according to the calculations of this study, would be 5,000 times heavier than Pluto. Thus, there is no doubt to classify it as a planet. Unlike many of the smaller objects in the solar system, such as the dwarf planets, the ninth planet gravitationally dominates the extended region of the Kuiper Belt, where it orbits. And this area is much larger than the spaces dominated by all the other known planets of the solar system. Would it now be possible to prove its existence with images? For years, many studies have been arguing some evidence for the existence of an additional planet in our solar system, others pointing out that it is an exoplanet. The formation of the ninth planet depends on its structure. If it resembles a gas planet, this means, according to the currently prevailing theory, that it would be made of a gaseous envelope on a solid rocky core. In another case, if this planet is telluric, this implies, like other rocky planets, that it was formed from small fragments, asteroids, and small solid bodies, gradually gaining mass. However, the problem, according to the two astronomers, Brown and Batigan, is that the solar nebula that formed our solar system was not large enough for a planet to form in such a distant and eccentric orbit. Thus, like Uranus and Neptune, this planet would have formed closer to the Sun and then been expelled by Jupiter or Saturn during the epoch of planet formation to the outer reaches of the solar system. The current estimate of the two astronomers is that this could have happened between three and 10 million years after the formation of the solar system, which did not affect the Great Late Bombardment, which requires then a different explanation. This hypothesis can be a direct confirmation of the modeling of the history of the orbits of the planets of the solar system, including the unsolved problem of the migration of Jupiter, which according to the results of the simulation should have entered a stable orbit much closer to the Sun. According to computer simulations, the hypothesis of the presence of a fifth gas giant multiplies by more than 20 the chances of the formation of the present solar system compared to the situation without it. According to this theory, Jupiter should have moved gradually in the solar system, pushing a rather massive object out of its orbit near the Sun. But as Uranus and Neptune are still on circular and stable orbits, they could not be subject of impulse to Jupiter. Therefore, Jupiter had to eject a previously unknown planet, which judging by the elongation of the orbit, 
could be the ninth planet. It is fitting to note that if Jupiter were to launch Planet 9 into an elongated orbit, quite early in the planetary migrations, additional facts about the history of the solar system could be learned. In particular, in early March 2016, a group of scientists from the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian, and the University of Michigan suggested that over 4.5 billion years of the solar system's existence and development, there was a 10 to 15 percent probability of the ninth planet's departure from the solar system as a result of a close passage of another star. This further supports the hypothesis that the ninth planet is a gas giant. In a study published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society letters, astronomers have shown through computer simulations that the ninth planet could have formed in another star system, which when sufficiently close to ours would have been captured by our sun. It should be noted that our sun would have appeared in a large region of massive star production, probably comparable to the Orion Nebula. This hypothesis may be correct if the ninth planet was captured by the Sun in the first moments of the formation of the solar system. That is to say, at the time when the stars had not yet had time to move away from each other after their formation in the nebula. At that time, a star passing close enough may not have had enough gravity to keep its planets in their orbits, which is why the ninth planet would have moved towards our young sun. More precisely, Planet 9 could have been pushed away by other planets, and when it found itself in an orbit too elongated relative to its host star, our sun took advantage of this to capture Planet 9 from its neighboring star. When the different stars moved away from each other, the ninth planet had already remained in the orbit of our star. However, such a scenario requires to fulfill several conditions used in computer simulations. For example, the stars of the cluster must move at low speed, about 1 km per second, or 0.6 miles per second. Moreover, the Sun should pass close to the parent star of Planet 9 at about 150 astronomical units to avoid disturbances of the Kuiper Belt. Also, the gravity of the Sun must overcome the attraction of the parent star of Planet 9. Also, the Planet 9 must be on an orbit of a radius of about 100 astronomical units from its parent star. That is to say, it must have already been ejected from its original orbit. Because at this distance from its star, it is impossible for a planet to form. Also, the current dynamic configuration of the solar system must be roughly reproduced after the capture of an exoplanet by the Sun. A sequence of many criteria unlikely. In 2019, astronomers at the University of Illinois at Chicago proposed a theory that explains the trajectories of celestial bodies and microlensing phenomena toward the end of the Milky Way. This study suggests that what actually causes the gravitational distortions is a small black hole that formed as a result of the Big Bang, which our solar system then took control of. According to their calculations, both effects could be produced by a small black hole with a mass of 5 Earths and a radius of 4.5 centimeters, or 1.7 inches, formed in the early universe and captured by the Sun's gravity. This would make it far too small and dark to be found with our current telescopes. However, many astronomers have every reason to believe that our universe is full of them. If we admit their existence, then primordial black holes may even make up as much as 80% of the universe, which astronomers cannot yet see with instruments. 
Primordial black holes are hypothetical objects formed during the first moments of the Big Bang. If they exist, they would have the mass of a planet rather than that of a star. Such black holes are called primordial, and to date, their existence has not been officially confirmed, and since they would still gravitationally pull on nearby objects, there may be other ways to find them. One way would be to send a fleet of tiny space probes towards its predicted general direction. Scientists argue that spacecraft of about 100 grams of mass, or 0.002 pounds, could be programmed to transmit a regularly timed signal. If one of them were within range of the black hole, the signals would be dilated by its gravity. The disadvantage of this approach is that the spacecraft would need to time its signals with atomic clock precision, and there is currently no atomic clock small enough to fit on a 100 gram or 0.002 pound probe. Another team of scientists has proposed an alternative in which the probes instead send a simple signal and high resolution radio telescopes measure the offset of their trajectories. But a third team argues that effects such as the solar wind would overwhelm any gravitational effects. It's all pretty wild speculation, but the idea is gaining momentum. So what's out there? A tiny black hole? An incredible Planet Nine? Or simply... nothing? Of course, all of this begs the obvious question. If the ninth planet is really there, why hasn't anyone seen it? To answer this question, one astronomer explained that the reason this search is so difficult is that most astronomical surveys are not looking for one thing specifically. For example, astronomers would normally look for a class of objects, such as a particular type of planet. Even if they're rare, if you examine a large enough expanse of space, you'll probably find something. But tracking down a specific object, such as Planet Nine, is a whole other exercise. Another factor is the somewhat more prosaic challenge of reserving time slots to use the right kind of telescope. For now, the only instrument to find the Phantom Planet is the Subaru Telescope. Located atop a dormant volcano in Hawaii, this telescope is capable of capturing even faint light from distant celestial objects. This is ideal, as the dark planet would be so far away that it is very unlikely to reflect the light of the sun. The good news is that the Vera Rubin telescope will be operational in 2023. This new generation telescope currently under construction in Chile, will systematically scan the sky, photographing all the available view every few nights to monitor its content. And why not discover the ninth planet? If the ninth planet exists, its extreme distance limits the amount of sunlight reflected by its surface Locating it would be all the more difficult, as it is so far away. Not only because of its dullness, it reflects little or no light, but its relative decrease in orbital speed would make differences in position more difficult to identify. There are telescopes capable of observing an object of this size, but with so much sky to cover, researchers would first have to narrow down the sections of space where Planet Nine is unlikely to exist. A planet far from the Sun is difficult to detect, requiring telescopes operating in the infrared spectrum or powerful optical devices capable of capturing even the faintest illumination of the Sun on the planet's surface. On infrared telescopes, the work will go faster, but errors are possible, and on optical telescopes, the result will be reliable, but it would take more time. 
the Infrared Orbiting Telescope WISE, which conducted broadband surveys in 2009, has not yet detected Planet 9, although it has provided fairly detailed images. Therefore, Brown, Batigan, and other astronomers plan to find it using the Japanese telescope Subaru in the Hawaiian Islands, which is considered one of the largest and highest quality telescopes in the world. Just note that the diameter of its main mirror exceeds 8 meters or 26 feet. In addition, it is capable of operating in both the optical and infrared light ranges. But even with such a tool, it will take at least five years for scientists to find out more about the existence of this mysterious Planet 9. In the same context, in a study approved for publication in the Planetary Science Journal, astronomers from Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, unveiled a new method for detecting faint orbital trails in the darkest parts of the cosmos that could help find this new, yet elusive planet. The so-called Planet Nine is a hypothetical object that would orbit the Sun at a great distance from it. Until now, its possible existence has only been predicted theoretically, and attempts to find this object in practice have not been successful. However, astronomers have developed a new method for detecting dark space objects that improves the chances of finding the enigmatic planet. This method is based on an algorithm that collects scattered light data from thousands of space telescope images and determines the potential orbits of previously unknown objects. In recent years, astronomers studying the orbits of small icy objects in the Kuiper Belt have discovered that the location of these objects and their trajectories may indicate the influence of an unseen object. The search for this planet can be reduced to looking for the faintest orbital traces in an incredibly dark place in space that no modern telescope can detect. But then how does it work? To discover dark objects, a method was created called shift and summation. In the first step, researchers shift space telescope images along expected and predetermined orbits. In the second step, hundreds of images are summed so all the faint streaks detected by the algorithm are reduced to a single image. The authors of this method point out that from time to time, a faint streak indicates the trajectory of a moving object, which may be an asteroid or a planet. Incidentally, they admit that in the past, a similar method has been used to discover new moons in the solar system. But now, for the first time, it has been applied on a large scale to search for very distant objects in a large area. The images studied by the astronomers were obtained from a space telescope designed primarily to search for planets outside our solar system. But the main task at the beginning was to simply test the method. It was conducted on three trans-Neptunian objects known to scientists. Thus, the method was able to detect their faint light signals. The researchers then conducted a blind search in two sectors of the outer solar system, hoping to find Planet 9 or any previously unknown Kuiper Belt objects. As a result, they were able to detect 17 potential objects, which will help in understanding the dynamics of the outer solar system and the likely characteristics of the ninth planet. Astronomers are currently examining the data from 17 objects to identify them. In addition, the researchers also note that the vast majority of the light observed from the planets in the solar system is reflected light. However, the ninth planet, if it exists, is likely to be 12 to 23 times farther from the Sun than Pluto, and in a region of space that has been largely unexplored. Recently, astronomers at the California Institute of Technology were able to draw a map 
that narrows down the area where the planet might exist, or rather be hidden. It seems that the planet is not visible to us because it is hidden among bright objects in the Milky Way. The map in question has been organized using the gravitational attraction of the hypothetical planet. Astronomers claim that thanks to this map, the ninth planet could be found in less than two years, if their calculations are correct. Many astronomers agree that the most likely chance for planet hunters to find the ninth planet is the Vera Rubin Observatory, currently under construction, on top of a Chilean mountain. This 8.4 meter or 27 foot telescope with a huge field of view will photograph the entire visible sky every few nights. Beginning in 2023, the observatory will allow astronomers to track the movements of millions of celestial objects, including space debris, asteroids, comets, stars, and possibly even Planet Nine. If this planet exists, astronomers hope to collect images of it over the next 10 to 15 years, but you shouldn't expect those images to be visually stunning, because the hypothetical planet could be about 56 billion kilometers or 35 billion miles away, it doesn't receive much light from the sun and reflects very little light back to Earth. The first images of the planet are likely to show a few pixels against a dark background. Future missions may eventually reveal more details about the lost planet, but astronomers will have to find it first. Among scientists, there is no consensus on the discovery. Many arguments are presented to invalidate the hypothesis of the presence of the ninth planet. The existence of Planet Nine is largely determined by the unusual orbits of the trans-Neptunian objects that exist in the Kuiper Belt. Some of these objects exhibit bizarre motions in their orbits due to the effect of a mysterious planet four times the size of Earth orbiting alone on the outskirts of the solar system. However, a new study published in early 2019 in the Astronomical Journal offers an alternative explanation for this strange phenomenon. It indicates that the anomalies in the cluster's orbits may not be the result of Planet Nine at all. The authors of the study believe that a disk of small icy bodies with a total mass 10 times that of the Earth is responsible for the mystical orbits. Thus, by calculating and modeling the interactions between the trans-Neptunian objects and a giant ice disk, the researchers suggest that if the disk of icy debris that exists outside Neptune is large enough, it would explain the eccentricity of the trans-Neptunian objects' orbits, previously reported due to their combined gravitational effects. However, Scientists do not rule out that the giant disk and planet 9 exist together. And this is not the first time an alternative theory has been discussed. In June 2018, a team of researchers suggested that even a group of asteroids in the farthest corners of the solar system could be the cause of these strange orbits. On the other hand, a recent study by a physics PhD student at the University of Michigan may challenge the hypothesis of a ninth planet. He suggests that the cluster of trans-Neptunian objects may not have been caused by the gravitational pull of the ninth planet. Instead, he suggests that the objects appeared clustered because Brown and Batigan observed only a small portion of the sky during a specific part of the year at a specific time of day. Indeed, the clustering of trans-Neptunian objects is a consequence of where and when we look. Moreover, these objects are difficult to spot because they are only visible when their orbit is closest to the solar system. Once trans-Neptunian objects move away from the sun, they are almost impossible to spot. 
Thus, their search is also limited by the limited and variable sensitivity of existing telescopes. These technical challenges should be eliminated when the powerful Vera Rubin Observatory, currently under construction in Chile, is completed in 2023. It will have well-defined selection biases, which could allow astrophysicists to spot hundreds of new trans-Neptunian objects. To rule out the possibility of a selection bias, the research team selected 14 trans-Neptunian objects that were not included in the Brown or Batigan study. The research team observed the motions of the trans-Neptunian objects using a computer simulator that was programmed to eliminate selection bias, such as telescope timing and positioning. Asserting that these objects cluster implies that they are generally evenly distributed throughout the solar system and have somehow been removed from their original locations. However, the research team did not find enough evidence to support the idea that trans-Neptunian objects have uniform positions in the solar system to begin with, which would reverse the conclusion. Essentially, the research team denied the fundamental evidence that must be present to support the existence of Planet Nine. Some clustering was still observed in the 14 new trans-Neptunian objects that the research team observed, which means that these objects may behave in this way independently and may not be influenced by gravity. Note also that one of the discoverers of the new ninth planet, Michael Brown, is known as the man who killed Pluto because it was on his initiative that Pluto was deprived of the official status of a planet, a decision that was badly perceived by a number of people. The main problem of distant interstellar travel is that our spacecraft do not have enough fuel to navigate in space for years. Probes and ships use the tactic of gravitational maneuvers. This helps to accelerate the ships to a certain speed, thus saving fuel. If one day a project were to emerge to send a ship beyond our solar system, the gravity of the ninth planet could help it reach its destination. However, this flight technique can pose problems. For example, if the gravity of the ninth planet is less than that of Neptune, the speed of the ship will be extremely low. In any case, researchers will only be able to tell exactly what the properties of a potential new celestial body are when they study it in detail. For the first time in 150 years, scientists already have strong evidence that there may be more planets in our solar system than we already know. This could change our understanding of how the entire solar system was created. Astronomers have gotten used to talking about Planet Nine, but when it stops being a hypothesis and becomes a real planet, it will get a new name. The honor of naming a new planet goes to the person or team who actually makes the discovery, which means that the main proponents of this planet, Brown and Batigan, may or may not name it. And whoever names the first major new discovery in 200 years will have to get approval from a group called the International Astronomical Union before the nickname becomes official. Usually, the major planets in our solar system are named after Roman deities. Our planet is an exception, since Earth comes from an old English word meaning simply ground. However, in recent years, astronomers have been naming objects in the Kuiper Belt for indigenous deities around the world. Sedna is named after a sea goddess in Inuit mythology and other distant tiny worlds are named after Haumea, a Hawaiian goddess of childbirth, and Makemake, a Rapa Nui creator god, to name a few. But what if this planet was just a dream of some? 
What if it did not exist? This is perhaps the most important thing to know about the potential new planet. So far, no one has seen this planet. Astronomers only assume the presence of this planet based on statistical anomalies in the orbits of minor planets that have developed over billions of years. In other words, based on the behavior of nearby objects, which are affected by a gravitational force, scientists suggest that this force may come from a large planet. Only a visual detection can confirm its existence. However, since the planet moves very slowly and is far from Earth, this makes it very difficult to find. However, astronomers estimate that the planet could be found in about five years. In fact, there is currently no way for astronomers to confirm or deny any of these hypotheses. However, scientists are pinning their hopes on more powerful and modern telescopes many of which will enter Earth orbit in the near future. One of the great mysteries of the solar system has not been solved, but the research continues. Astrophysicists and astronomers from famous universities are studying unknown bodies of the solar system. We can hope that the enigma of the ninth planet will be solved. And if the mysterious planet is found, it will become a real discovery in astronomy and this planet will become the ninth in our solar system. Otherwise, it will remain a myth, like the numerous speculations of the last centuries explaining the life forms on the surface of Venus, or the famous irrigation channels on the surface of Mars,